This Thursday, we are going to be getting the April Monthly Award showcasing some of the best players in Major League Baseball over the month of April. And you see, we've already gotten a head start on the program, but there are still 11 mystery items to be discovered. And you'll finally be able to get this 91 overall Andre Dawson. But in today's video, we are going to be going through and I'm going to give you my predictions for some of the guys we could be seeing this Thursday. I think it was a really good month for a lot of players, and I think some of these higher overall cards allow of people are going to be happy with. But let's hop right into it, starting with the lower overall cards and working our way up to the Lightning player. And we're going to give the Cleveland Guardian some love, and I think Owen Miller is going to get a card. Owen Miller in the month of April hit an insane 377 on base percentage of 444, and he leads the league in doubles with nine. He's just been a hit machine over the past month, doesn't have as many at bats as some of the other players. I think with the month he just had, it's safe to say he should get one. Moving on, let's talk about one of the funniest looking players in the league. And just off the bat, that sounds like a dick move to say, but he has no neck. I think that right there gave it away. But Daniel Vogelback had an insane month for the Pirates. Daniel Vogelback has these stretches every once in a while where he just goes all God tier Super Saiyan mode and hits everything. And April was that month. Is he gonna keep this up? No, not very likely. But he hit 292 with a 352 on base, 829 OPS, three home runs, eight RBIs. And while these stats don't always just stick out, remember this is probably gonna be like an 85 overall card. And let's be real, is Daniel Vogelback actually gonna get another card throughout the year? Probably not. This is gonna be like the only good month he has for the rest of the season. I can't tell what would surprise me more. Daniel Vogelback keeping up this pace or him winning Vogue's Sexiest Man of the Year award? Both are never gonna happen. This one's at least somewhat predictable because he was once a top draft pick, a top prospect. He just hasn't had his breakout campaign yet, but it's looking like he's heading towards that route. The Braves won the World Series last year and it seems like they're getting better. Acuna just got back and now they have this man Kyle Wright anchoring the rotation. I mean, this man's been nothing but insane throughout his first four starts. A 1.13 ERA, which yeah, ERA doesn't always tell the whole story, but him having a 1.38 fit does. A .83 whip, six walks in 24 innings, which is 2.3 walks per nine. And he has 34 strikeouts, which is 12.8 Ks per nine. 5.3 hits per nine. Hasn't allowed a home run yet. Every stat you look on Kyle Wright was just amazing throughout the month. I'm gonna put a stamp on this and say that I guarantee that he will get a card on Thursday. Probably won't keep up this pace throughout the whole year, but don't be surprised if Kyle Wright has a huge breakout campaign and takes a step towards the top of the rotation arm because he was that guy down in the minor leagues and down at Vanderbilt. Plus, I have him on my fantasy team, so it kind of helps me out if he has the success all year. But those are some of the lower overall players that I think we'll see. Now let's talk about some guys who have really taken off to start the year and could get some bigger cards like high 80s to low 90s over. One of those guys is Pablo Lopez of the Marlins. Marlins have a million young arms on their major league team and top prospects down on the farm system. But who would have thought that it'd be Pablo Lopez having a Cy Young caliber year the first month into the season, anchoring that rotation. He already has a 1.5 war a month into the season. If he kept that up, he'd have like an eight to nine war season. He pitched four games, 23 and a third innings, and he gave up one run. That equates to a .39 ERA. It also helps when you don't have a lot of guys on base because he's only walked four batters so far and has only given up 13 hits. That's a whip of .73. Keeping the ball on the ground, hasn't given up a home run yet, and his ERA plus is a thousand one two. Absolutely insane start for Pablo Lopez. And it's weird because he's one of those guys who doesn't rely on striking every hitter out like a Corbin Burns, a Jacob deGrom, or any of those other top guys with nasty stuff. Well, 8.9 strikeouts per nine is pretty good. It's also showing that he's just not allowing a lot of hard contact. Hard hit percentage is only 29.3% with a 46.6% ground ball rate. I mean, these numbers aren't going to be sustainable, largely in part because he allows the ball in play and he only has allowed a 224 batting average on balls in play. For his career, he's been anywhere from 280 to 300. So over the next month or so, expect his numbers to spike up, but since none of that matters for the month of April, 
He's another guy I'm gonna almost guarantee gets a card this week. I just love seeing players leave the Cubs and all of a sudden just go off. And Anthony Rizzo has been going off, including a three home run game a couple of days ago. I mean, it probably helps that he plays in Yankee Stadium and a couple of his home runs have probably been no more than 320 feet, but they're still home runs. And he leads the league with nine of those. 21 RBIs, 269 batting average isn't insane, but 394 on base percentage is getting the job done. OPS is north of 1,000, and I don't know why people should be surprised. This man could absolutely rake all throughout his career. Had a down season last year when it really wasn't even that bad. But throughout his first month, he already has almost half the home runs he had all of last year. He's definitely found his power swing in New York, and I like that I somewhat get to root for the guy now because he's not in the Cubs. I could see his gain of Rizzo with some big time power boots. This next one, they just have to do it. This man hasn't pitched a game in two years, and he's pushing 40, yet he's still looking like the same Cy Young caliber pitcher. And that man is Justin Verlander. What he's doing, it's just insane. He pitched one game in 2020. He's been hurt ever since. And also, he's 39 years old, and so far in four games, he has a 1.73 ERA, has only walked four batters in 26 innings with 28 strikeouts. He leads the league with a very nice .69 whip, only 4.8 hits per nine. And while he won't keep up this ridiculous of numbers, mainly because he has a 1.93 batting average on balls in play, it's still looking like Justin Verlander is the same Cy Young caliber pitcher that he was pre-injury. I mean, this guy's looking like he could pitch for another five plus years at this rate. I think it would be sick to start off the year with a high end 92 two overall Justin Verlander card before we inevitably get his 99 overall Cy Young card either from the Astros or the Tigers. He's had a damn good career so they could choose a lot for that. And then I said at the beginning of the video the Lightning player it's gonna be a big name. It's gonna be a player that every single person should want on their team. Only issue is I couldn't come to a conclusion. So I have two players that I'm about to show you for the Lightning player. They'll only pick one and I don't think the other is gonna be in this program just because they both already have high overall cards. But if we get either of these cards, this program's gonna be insane. Starting out, we are gonna be going with Jose Ramirez. In the month of April, he hit 342, an OPS of over 1,100. Seven home runs, he leads the league in RBIs, leads the league in total bases, and what would make this card so good in this game? As if it's like last year's game, these are gonna be 95 overall cards. I don't see him doing any lower than 94, but Jose Ramirez is a switch hitter with a ton of versatility. Third base primary, but at least on his live series, card he can play first second, short, and left field. Really nice swing, also has some very underrated defense and speed, so they could really juice this card up and make him insanely good. Then his competition for this card is gonna be Nolan Arenado. He actually has a better war at 1.9. Already a two war season into the season, he's on pace for a 10 plus four season. Six home runs, led the league in slugging and OPS, and he's arguably the best defensive third baseman in baseball. So if he gets a 95 overall card, you know this card's gonna be insane with the hitting attributes and insane with the defense. And as much as I hate the Cardinals, I think I hate the Rockies more for essentially paying the Cardinals to take him off their hands. Like, here's 50 million dollars. Oh, and here's a top five player in all of baseball. Like, what the fuck are the Rockies doing? Anyways, if I had to pick between the two, I think Nolan Arenado gets the edge. His April was just too good. Higher war. Also leads in a lot of power numbers, like slugging and OPS and OPS plus. But either one of these cards in Diamond Dynasty, oh, they'd be so good. Jose Ramirez will provide you with the switch hitting and the versatility. Nolan Arenado will provide you with the hitting and the fielding. So you can't go wrong with either of these. I hope at least one of them is Lightning Player of the Month. And then don't forget, you will be able to unlock this 91 overall Andre Dawson on Thursday as well. Wish they wouldn't have revealed him early because now a 91 just kind of seems a little low. Still cool nonetheless. But those are my April Player of the Month predictions. Let me know in the comments section what do you think? There's 11 and I only went through eight, nine different possibilities. So there's going to be even more, even if I got every single one of these right, which let's face it, it's not going to happen. So let me know in the comment section, who do you think is deserving of a player of the month guard? Subscribe to the channel for daily MLB The Show news and tips, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.